Welcome to It's Your Turn. I'm Brenda Florida, Certified Life Coach, and no matter how exhausted, stressed, anxious, or overwhelmed you are, there is hope. You can start exactly where you are. There's nothing wrong with you. In fact, you're ready for it to be your turn or you wouldn't be here. You know, we hear words like vitality and confidence and empowerment and transformation, but what do they really mean? What do they look like in the practical aspects of our life? In the It's Your Turn podcast, we explore, learn, and put into practice practical tools and wise concepts for transformation. This is real life change, not platitudes. It's the intersection of the practical and the aspirational. It's your turn to make decisions that are aligned with exactly what you want. And if you've lost connection to what you want, that's okay, we'll reconnect it. You'll learn how to shift out of self-sabotaging patterns and tap in to the clarity confidence and vitality that you may feel like has been lost forever. It's your turn to step into the driver's seat of your life and embrace the power that is within you. So let's get to it. Welcome everyone. So today the big question is, what do you want more of? And I don't mean that just in a materialistic kind of way. I mean, sure, that's there's that too. I know I'm getting ready for a new car and, you know, I love to shop. I love to buy things. You know, I love to travel. I love to do all those things. So nothing wrong if that's the kind of more you're thinking of. But I'm also thinking sort of bigger and deeper than that. Like I had some social media posts and an email go out this week about my move here to the beach. Like that was something that for several years, I just really wanted to get out of the East Coast and winter and all of that and come to Southern California and live near the beach. And I wanted to be able to walk to the beach, which I felt very, you know, sort of greedy about like that to me was, you know, almost too much. If you didn't listen to last week's podcast, that's what that one was about. But anyway, I, you know, wanted to change my lifestyle in that way. So maybe there's something like that that you want more of. The other thing that has just come to me in the last couple of weeks, a couple of big ahas I've had very recently here to when I'm recording this is the desire to let go of a judgment that, that I inflict on myself that when I have challenges or adversity in my life, it's because I've done something wrong. Now that comes back to a very old uh, religious belief that I was taught um, when I was still involved in the evangelical Christian churches that I was in for the first 30 years of my life, my family was very much that way. You know, if something goes wrong, it's because you did something wrong. And even though for many years in my conscious mind or intellectually, if you want to think of it that way, I don't believe that at all. And I don't ever look at other people or who are facing adversity and judge them like, oh, they must have done something wrong or that wouldn't be happening to them. But that is exactly what I was doing to myself on a very subconscious level. So it took a while before that bubbled up and I realized that was what was really going on. So a lot of times, if you follow me on social media, you'll notice in the last couple of weeks, especially I've been doing a lot of posts around like, do you want more of this and less of that? It's all over the copy of my website, brendaflorida.com, because Usually when we want more of something, it does mean we want less of something else. And sometimes we're more focused on what we want less of, right? Like maybe you just are like, I can't even think about more. I just want less stress. I want to be able to spend more time in my day at a level four from one to 10 than a level two, you know? And so you could be very focused on the sort of mm, negative, if we want to call it that, the challenging aspects of what's going on in your, in your life. And the idea of thinking about m more feels completely unrealistic or out of reach or just like out of touch for you. So however you're thinking about it, if you love thinking about more, I always have, even when I was in great adversity, even when I was in my two and a half years of being homeless and broke, I was always thinking 
about the trips I would go on, the houses I would live in, you know, whatever, when I had more money. So I think some of us are just kind of wired where we tend to focus more on the, uh, I don't want any more of this. I want less of this. Um, and it can be harder to get to more. I've coached plenty of clients who have no idea what they even want. They've really lost touch of them with themselves to such a degree. They don't even know what the answer to that question is. What do you want more of? So wherever you are right now, that's fine. I love to say you're in the right place at the right time being exactly who you are. And I've got you, boo. Uh, so today I want to share with you a process I've come up with that I call right now the more process because it's really how I work clients and myself, you know, through obstacles, out of obstacles, however you want to, you know, think of that and into more of what they want in their lives. And I'm very happy to, you know, throw the curtain back and share that with you. And I'm also super excited because if you're listening to this in real time, which is the first Sunday in February of 2024, right now I am offering a group program, which I haven't done for a couple of years. So I'm very excited about this that I'm calling. Yes, you guessed it more. And so you can go to the link uh, in the show notes here or over in Instagram, uh, Brenda Florida Coach, it's the link in my bio. It's on my website, both as a pop-up when you go to the website, brendaflorida.com. It's on the work with me page of brendaflorida.com. You know, I'm trying to make it really easy to find, right? So it's everywhere. Uh, and I would love to have you join me in that. We're going to have weekly calls. We're going to have group coaching. I'm going to take you through this process at a much deeper level than, of course, I can on a podcast. Um, but I want to share it with you because it's going to be helpful uh, even over here in the shallow end of the pool of a podcast. It's going to be super helpful if you join me in the program. If you listen to this after the registration closes, then just you know DM me, email me, all that's in the show notes. And I'll hook you up one way or the other. I'll offer it again, or you can get the recordings or something like that, um, because I really want to get this program out in a big way and get it in a lot of people's hands. So the reason this process works is because there's a lot of focus in it, and I'll outline it a little more in a second, on our thoughts and our feelings, because what we're thinking about and how we're feeling is really what dictates the experience we're having in our lives. So I want you to think about that for a minute. And I'm going to give you an example uh, to sort of make that point, that it's our thoughts and our feelings that are creating the experience. So I love, 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 love air travel. OK, I always have since I was a little girl. and. Uh, this has been a bunch of years ago now, I was on a flight sitting next to somebody and the pilot, right before we took off, the pilot came on and announced that, you know, whatever, we'd be taxiing out soon, blah, blah. And that there was going to be some turbulence early on in our trip. He would make it as, you know, easy as possible. It wouldn't last too long, like that kind of thing. So he's pre-warning everybody about the turbulence. And I didn't really think anything about it. I mean, I know every time I get on an airplane, there might be turbulence and I'm not worried about that. And, but what I noticed was the lady next to me uh, was like gripping, little death grip sitting there on the tarmac on her armrest. And so I asked her and she said she was, yeah, that she was really scared. She's scared of flying anyway, you know, and now she knows we're going to have turbulence that makes her more afraid. And it just struck me as a perfect metaphor for this because we're having the exact same experience. We're both sitting on the exact same airplane, seeing, hearing the exact same announcement from the pilot. But my experience of it is completely different because my thoughts and therefore the feelings, because thoughts always trigger feelings, are different. You know, I'm that doesn't concern me at all where she she's very anxious now so she's having a totally different experience where our realities are the same it, we can play on all those words right um 
because her reality is her experience. And so she's very nervous, but we're both sitting on the same airplane with the same pilot doing the same thing. So there's always more than one way to go through any experience, any situation, circumstance, let's call it circumstance. Um, there's always a different way to experience a circumstance. And that's where you see people, you know, who have terrible childhoods and terrible upbringings who end up flourishing as adults and those who with terrible, you know, childhood and upbringings who are in terrible shape as adults. It's how we think and feel about what's going on in our circumstances. And so that's why the process I'm going to share with you works so well, because in this, the more process, what I'm going to do is teach you how to sort of like take charge of those thoughts and feelings so that you can be less impacted by what other people are doing, what other people are saying, what your circumstances are, whatever it is. And I, I say less impacted on purpose. It's not that we have some goal to not be impacted. The goal of growing emotionally and spiritually is not to become somehow numb, right? It is to be able to experience, to have the situation, the circumstance, the engagement with another person, the interaction with another person, but be more in charge of our own experience, our own narrative around it, okay? So that's a big reason why it works. I want to tell you a story of a client. So she was struggling about whether or not to leave her marriage. She was super unhappy. Um, and every time she told her spouse what was wrong, the problem, you know, what she was unhappy about in their relationship, somehow things got turned around. And it always seemed like everything was her fault, right? Because he would just kind of turn that conversation around. And instead of it being something he needed to do differently, it was always her fault. So part of her didn't really believe that. But the way he explained it, you know, she could see he did have a point. And so she just spent all this time confused and very discouraged. So after learning the more process, and then, of course, I was coaching her through it, she began to sort of sort through the parts that she was responsible for, because we all have things that we're responsible for in a relationship and in our own lives. And here's the important part, the things she was not responsible for. And she kind of learned how to like hold her spouse accountable for his part. And by that, I mean, she learned to communicate in a way that it took care of herself. She would at least communicate to him the things that, you know, she was holding him accountable. In truth, of course, we cannot make another person be accountable, um, but she could communicate that. And she got really clear about what she wanted and what her deal breakers were. And she felt confident in those conversations because she took the time first to do the inner work. So she went from a very high stress level on a regular basis to one that was much lower. You know, she remembered really who she was and how good it felt to trust herself. And, you know, that's a big thing. I mean, the whole reason why this I changed the name of this podcast to It's Your Turn is because so many clients, that that's what they were ready for in their life. Like they just wanted it to be their turn because they were so tired of giving to everybody else and putting whatever they wanted on hold to do whatever their kids wanted or their spouse wanted or a project at work or, you know, whatever, somebody else's priority. And so maybe what you want more of is simply to be a priority in your own life, more self-confidence, more being willing to speak up, or maybe it's not even being willing. Maybe it's finding the words. I coach a lot of people on okay, you know, they figure out what they want to speak up about, but they don't really know how to say it. That's a totally different step to go from, I have clarity that I don't like the way my spouse is treating me. We'll just go back to that other, the story I told a second ago, but how do I tell him that? How, how do I get the words out? Now, if you've not struggled with this, that might sound strange. If you have, that makes total sense. And I promise you, that's where I was you know, probably 25 years ago or so um, when I was in the last few years of my own marriage where 
I knew what I was feeling. I got clear on the ways that he was sort of gaslighting me or deflecting everything. And I wanted to be honest about what I was experiencing, what I needed, that kind of thing. But honest to goodness, I couldn't find the words. And so I had to practice with a therapist that I worked with at the time who was fantastic. And she helped me figure it out. And I do that with other people all the time. So the truth is we all get stuck in behavioral patterns that create confusion and they cause stress and they lead to that lack of self-confidence and they lead to self a lack of self-trust. Guilt is a big part of that. So when we don't have clarity, when we don't have confidence, when we're wondering if we're being selfish and I feel guilty because I know somebody else would rather me do this instead of what I want to do, then we don't tend to trust ourselves. We don't tend to have the courage to say, no, I realize this other person wants me to do this thing for them, but I'm going to say no, and that's okay. And even if they're upset. I'm okay because I trust myself and I know that I need to take this time to myself or to go do something else for myself or whatever. But I do want to say here, when you're saying no to someone, you do not need to, number one, explain yourself and give them reasons why you're saying no. And number two, you don't have to have like an excuse. I'm, I need to go wash my hair, uh, you know. Oh, I've got another thing I need to be at that night. Whatever, It's not worth lying for. You can't attend. You can't join them. You can't do that thing with them, whatever it is. And that's the only reason you need is that you can't. And if they ask you, well, why? You know, what are you doing? You can just say, I just need some time to myself or I've just got another commitment. The commitment can be you. Okay. So don't go create for yourself a whole nother list of things to do that are not really what you want to do because you're trying to get out of what somebody else wants you to do. It's just a no. Uh, but anyway, I digress a bit on that. Anyway, so we have the reason why it's so hard. Okay. I'm, I'm sure many of you are listening to what I'm saying and you're like, yeah, Brenda, easier said than done. And that's totally true. And I get that. And here's why. 90 to 95% of our brain activity is actually subconscious, okay? So we're not aware of it. We don't need to monitor it. Nothing, we have nothing to do with it. It's doing its own thing. And only five to 10% of what's going on is what we are initiating or having some control of or deciding on kind of a thing. So that's great in many areas of our lives because part of that 90 to 95% is the brain activity that keeps our heart pumping and keeps us breathing and keeps us like in something that's super repetitious that we've done for a long time, like brushing our teeth, right? We don't go to the bathroom and wonder what in the world that thing is for. We know it's a toothbrush. We know how to brush our teeth. Well, that's just because we practiced it over and over. Another good example of that is driving, right? Like when you, the first day you're trying to learn to drive, it seems like so many different things and how are you going to ever remember all the things? And especially if you learn to drive, a, you know, standard and you have a clutch and all of that. And then you do it a bunch of times and then you do it without even thinking about it. So that's the subconscious at work and all that is great, okay? But it's not discriminatory. So what the subconscious also takes is a repetitive thought. I'm fat, I'm ugly, I'm not smart, I'm not good enough. I, you know, whether it's those are things you've been told as happens to many people or you've just, you know, internalized it and you tell it to yourself, those are now in your subconscious too. So you're not, you know, for instance, if you have challenges with your body image and thinking you're overweight, you're not looking in the mirror and actually pondering with your conscious mind, huh, do I look overweight or is my body weight about right or am I comfortable? It's just right away without any thought at all that thought pops into your head. I'm fat. I look awful in this, you know, whatever, whatever. And you, you know, you know that because if you think about it, as I'm explaining this, you realize those thoughts just emerge. Well, that's because they're coming out of your subconscious, just like it, the thought emerges for how you brush your teeth. You don't have to think about it. So 
the there are many ways that all that stuff in our subconscious doesn't serve us. It's why a habit is so freaking hard to break or to start. You can have in your conscious mind, oh, this would be so good for me. And I even know like when I, you know, go to the gym or I don't drink too much or I whatever, whatever. I feel so much better. So why is it so hard for me to do it consistently? That is the oldest story in the book, right? And the reason why is because it's, that's your conscious mind, but it's only five or 10% of you. And so it's a real, you know, sort of uh, Titanic there with the iceberg. You're, we're only seeing what we're really consciously thinking is just the tip of the iceberg. There's way more under the surface of the sea. And so the more process is designed to help you break through some of that. And again, that's why the group program or when you're one-on-one -on -one coaching with me is so much more powerful. I mean, I cannot tell you how much more powerful than listening to this podcast. Love the podcast. Love that you're here listening to it. And hopefully there's going to be a bunch of things that I've said that are going to help you in some way, because that's why I do this. Uh, and it would absolutely be untrue to make you think that it's any substitute for being with me in a class, being with me one-on-one, -on -one, because we all have blind spots and it takes another person looking at us or reflecting something back to us for us to see it because blind spots are all those things in our subconscious. And so the power of having this other person, me, the coach, being the facilitator, the non-judgmental third party who has no skin in the game as far as what any decisions or anything you do are, right? Like I don't have an agenda that the client, I've had many clients trying to figure out whether to stay or leave their marriages. I don't care if they stay or go. I'm trying to coach them into their truth, not into staying or leaving. Every client I have, and the same will be true of everybody in this group program called MORE, my only intention and goal, if you want to call it that, is to get you closer to your own truth, to get you to uncover those subconscious thoughts so you can bring them into your conscious awareness and decide what you want to do with them. So here are the steps that we take in the more process. So you can kind of feel into the, both the sort of concepts of it, which I've just shared a lot of with you, and the nitty gritty of how to, right? Because I always want to be very practical. I'm not going to just talk about these, you know, thoughts and feelings that are all in your subconscious. And so what, just don't do that anymore. You know, we need to know how we need these processes, which is different than a formula because I'm very anti-formula. <laughs> there are formulas that have worked beautifully for people and then they tend to go create a business where they sell their formula and tell everybody to buy my formula because my formula will work for you. And then they get testimonials for people it did, but they never have all the people who took the program or got the coaching and it didn't work. And I have been the student in many of those kinds of programs because, you know, being an online entrepreneur, there's always somebody with, you know, the how to build your funnel and this and that and you know, follow these steps and you'll have a five figure launch and all those things. And I've done many of them and followed the steps. They don't work. I, it's not that I think the formula is flawed. It's just that formula, we're all unique. So one formula doesn't work for everybody. That's why I like to think in terms of processes. That's why, you know, at this point, I'm happy to say I haven't had a client who felt like their coaching wasn't worth it. You know, they didn't get anything out of it because I'm not trying to lay my process, my uh, formula on you. I'm working with a process and especially in one-on-one -on -one coaching, I can go way off in all kinds of different directions because there's so much, you know, we have more time, more intimacy and all of that. And so I've not had the client that we couldn't improve their life, you know, but that's because I'm tailoring it to meet every person's unique journey. So you get some of that in a group program like more, but what you get in more that's also cool that you don't get in one-on-one -on -one is the community aspect of it and just being with it, you know, sort of on the journey with other people uh, and the benefits of, of that. So 
here are the steps in the process. One, we need to know what we want. Like we need to find and be able to articulate what it is I want, even if we have to start with what I want less of, okay? I don't wanna be so stressed. I don't want to um, be so incisive. I don't want, you know, that that's fine. If that's where you are, because all you know is kind of the pain points of your life, we can take it from there and find the, okay, so what you want is more sense of calm. Maybe you want to feel more grounded. You want to feel more confident in your own decisions, you know, whatever. Then we, we, we will find the more from there. But we need to know what it is. You know, it's that concept of how can I possibly get even close to hitting a target if I don't even know what the target is. And so one of the things that happens when we get stuck is everything just feels elusive. We don't know. It's like we lose the target of our lives. And that's why it's so frustrating. That's why it's so stressful. And so part of this process is getting into that clarity of, okay, how can I articulate what I want more of in my life? Second would be identifying the thoughts that are in opposition to what you want more of or are supporting that stuff you want less of. So in my aha a couple of weeks ago of I'm doing something wrong and that's why, you know, whatever, I haven't met my ideal romantic partner, you know, the thing, I mean, I'm a life coach and I love my life, but it's not perfect folks. So there are things, many things I want more of. Okay. And so I had to realize, once I realized, oh my gosh, I'm actually telling myself, I'm having this thought that when I miss the target, when I miss the mark and I'm not getting something I want, it's because I've done something wrong. Okay, so now I've identified that, okay? And then I have to work through that. Is that true or untrue? Well, I know uh, consciously that that's not true. But I can also feel into the feeling of it, all that diminishment that that kind of a thought brings, that I've done something wrong. Like it's very blamey and shamey and, uh, you know, pu it's punishment, right? I don't get to have a romantic partner because I did something wrong. Like there's just so many things that are diminishing and shaming and debilitating about that thought that. I need to, I need to identify that. I need to not run from it. Like those are not fun feelings, but I need to allow myself to feel that so I can release it and start to replace it with something that actually serves me. Okay. So this third step is kind of like release and replace. Um, I'm releasing the sort of toxic waste there of those old thoughts and beliefs, and I'm replacing it with thoughts that serve me that I can believe in, okay? And by that, I just mean if I'm thinking, I, well, I already know, my subconscious programming is when I don't get what I want, it's because I've done something wrong. So I may not be able to go as far as saying, okay, I didn't get what I wanted, but I did everything right. You know, like sometimes the opposite is just too far and it doesn't ring of the truth either because we could always figure out nuances and different ways of doing things. So I've got to find something that I can actually own and believe in. Like I did the best I could. Right. That's a great non judgmental statement. Um, so, whatever it is, and that's what we'll do during this program. Like, we take each of these things. We'll, there's four steps in the process, and we're taking six weeks to go through them, plus two more weeks of um, group coaching. So, because uh, I want to be able to break these out and give you more tools in the program that you can use to work with this in different ways for yourself. All right, and last but not least, and this is where a lot of people will kind of stop thinking that somehow now that I've gotten clear on what I want, it's going to start magically coming. We're going to create a plan. These are like baby steps, not giant leaps. There's a lot of allowing in our plan. Like it's not about being in control. It's more about 
taking inspired action, looking for the serendipity or the synchronicities and things. It's about looking for the truth, trusting ourselves, having a buddy, you know, to to go through the journey with you on and to the degree that you may need to be held accountable for certain tasks or certain things you want to do that are part of your plan. You know, that's great. Some people need that. Some people don't. But the point is you don't have to do it alone. You don't have to figure it out alone and you don't have to be in the process of it because plans take time. We don't just, again, like get that clarity, identify our limiting beliefs, release them and boom. Now we have everything we want. You know, if it was that simple, I would be a gazillionaire. Um, so it's all about the processes and different tools in each of these categories that I can give you in this program so that you can go deeper and deeper and deeper with it. And then, of course, I will be there facilitating, guiding, coaching all along the way, um, as well as people in the community with you. So with that, I'm going to wrap up today's episode and just invite you absolutely to hop over right now because registration won't be open for much longer and register for the more program or get click on the link. We'll just take you to all the other details, what we're going to cover each week, blah, blah, blah. The calls are all recorded. Anyway, there's all kinds of details in the link. And then also the, um, button for you to click on so that you can register. And so I really just so sincerely want to invite you to go deeper than this podcast and join me in the more program because it will change your life if you want your life to change. And I believe that it's your turn and it is your time to get whatever more means to you in your life. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for joining me for this episode of It's Your Turn. I've got resources and links in the show notes for you, but here's what's more fun. DM me on Instagram at Brenda Florida Coach and let me know you listened to today's episode. I'd love to connect with you. And then share this episode with somebody who needs to hear it because I know you know somebody who needs to hear it. And I'll see you in the next episode of It's Your Turn.